Hello and welcome to the Huntron Access DH2 live demonstration. What you're going to see in this video is a demonstration of how a test is created using a Huntron Access DH2 and let's get started. The first thing you want to do is to add a new database. So we'll use the add new board button, give it our board a name, demo board is what we will use. And that's all we need. So we'll click OK. We'll save that to our default path. So now we have a database created to add to. So the next step would be to create sequences. A sequence is a container for all the components that you want to test on a particular side of a board. So we'll use the Add New button and we'll add a new sequence. We'll just call it Top Side since all the components that I want to test are on the top side of this circuit board. You can also select a level of where the board is mounted vertically within the prober. And we have four preset levels called top, middle, bottom, and base. The board I have mounted in here right now is mounted at the middle slot level, so we'll select that. Click OK. And now this sequence is added to the database. The next thing to do is to add components to the sequence. So we'll start by adding two ICs. One is called U2, the other is called U3. We'll start by adding U2. So use the Add New button, type in U2. I'll just tab between the fields here. This happens to be a DIP package. It's a small surface mounted SOIC uh, package. And the number of pins is 14. And if you know the pin spacing, we recommend you put it in because it will help you later on. This one happens to be 1270 microns, which is about 50 mils. We'll click OK. And that now is added to our sequence. Now U3 is almost identical to U2. So I'm going to use U2 to create U3. So I'll right click on the row header for U2 and select build. And what this does, it makes a copy of U2, but it calls it U3. So it increments the name by one number. And for demonstration, I do want to add a three pin device. So we'll add a transistor. How about Q3 or Q1 actually? So we'll type in Q1. The package style is different on these, it's called a probe package, and the number of pins would be three. Click OK to add that to our tree. And then lastly, I also want to show you how we do a two pin device, like a resistor or capacitor. So we'll add that to our database, how about R1, tab down to the package field. This is also a probe package, and just one pin because each pin has two probe positions, a Z1 and a Z2 probe position. So we only need one pin for these devices. We'll click OK, and R1 is added. So the next step would be to select alignment points for this circuit board. Over in the prober pane, we select the Align tab. We drop this down to alignment number one. And then notice the camera becomes live. So I'm going to use these arrow keys to move the camera over to where I want my first alignment point to be, which is a fiducial mark. So each time I click one of these arrow buttons, it moves the distance here, 50,800 microns, which is about two inches. Once I get close, you can just click in the camera image and move the camera to that point. So there is the fiducial mark right there. So you can click in the center of that. And we'll just micro step that into position. We'll try 50 microns at a time. Move forward and right. Now it looks pretty good. So we'll set that as alignment number one. Notice it incremented to alignment number two automatically. So we'll navigate to the opposite corner of the circuit board where the other fiducial is located. You can hear the prober moving in the background as I click each arrow button. Okay. So now I'll go ahead and click in the image itself to get myself down to that, align, that alignment point. So there's the fiducial mark. We'll click on the center of that. Let's get that a little bit closer. And we'll move that just a little bit to the, to the left. Get 50 microns at a time. That looks great. So we'll set that and save those now become our alignment points. These are used to position the board within the prober. So if you were to pull this board out, put another one in, go into your alignment points and set them, the software will correct for any slight position difference between the original board and the one that you just put in. So the alignment points are very, very necessary and very, very important. The next thing we want to do before we can teach the location of the components is to 
create a board overview image and that will be displayed in the image pane at the bottom right here. So the way we create this image is by setting two boundaries, a front left boundary and a back right boundary. So what you can do is move the crosshairs of any of the camera views. We'll just use the align view. And this is about where we want our front left boundary to be. So down in the image pane, we can click the set front left button and that sets our first boundary. Now we want to move the camera to the back right corner. Um, a quick way to do that for me would be to go to select alignment number one, which happens to be located near the back right corner. So we'll go ahead click out here a little ways from that back right corner. That looks pretty good. And we'll click set back right. And now you notice that we have a create image button enabled. So I'll click that. And now the camera is going to move uh, across back and forth and snake its way back and forth across the board, capturing s smaller images. And in the end, it will stitch those images together to create a board overview image down below. This does take some time, so I'm going to just kind of pause the video capture here uh, while it takes takes its time doing this. Okay, so the board overview image is now created. You can see that down in the bottom right corner in the image pane. So the reason we want to do this now is because this image becomes a navigational tool. So by clicking in the, the board image, such so as clicking on the word transistors, you can see the camera is driven to that point. So this saves us a lot of time as far as navigating around the board. So now we'll start with teaching the position of U2. Now the way the software works is it wants to teach the Z2 position first. With the Z2 position, uh, probe is on the left, the Z1 probe is on the right. So we'll teach the left side probe first. But we use the Z1 camera to do all the teaching. No sense in having jumping back and forth between the cameras on the two heads. We'll just use one head to do it. So we'll select Z2 in the teach window. Select pin number one. And what you want to do is we want to put Z2 on a ground point on the board and then use Z1 to probe the pins of the device. So we'll use the Z2 essentially as our common reference to ground. So I'm going to teach it down on this one pad near U2. This happens to be a ground connection to the board. So we'll position the center of this test pad and save that. Now we want Z2 probe to stay in this one position the entire time. Z1 is probing the pins of U2. So I'm just going to select pins and group 14 and we'll save all 14 pins for Z2 in this one position. Okay, so that's now complete. So now all you have to do is to teach the Z1 position, and we'll go ahead and navigate to pin 1 of U2. Again, we're teaching the position for Z1, which is our signal line. It's like holding our red probe to these points and our black probe to the ground. So we'll save that, and there's going to be seven pins on this side of the device. We're talking seven pins in this row. So I'll change my pins and groups to seven. The travel distance here will automatically change based on the number of pins and the pin spacing that you put in earlier when you created the component. So this should be the distance from pin 1 to pin 7, so we can just hit the down arrow key. And notice how the crosshairs go exactly to that pin 7. So we'll save that group based on the beginning and the end of that row. So it incremented automatically to pin 8. So we'll select pin 8 over here, get the crosshairs on pin 8, which is the beginning of the next row. Move that slightly to the left and up a little bit. Okay, it looks great. So we'll save that. Again, we can use the arrow keys to move the distance to the end of that row. That looks good. So we'll save seven pins based on those positions. So U2 is now complete, the Z1 and the Z2 Pro positions. Now we can move to U3. Now I want to copy the ground position or the Z2 position from U2 to U3 because I can use that same ground point with U3 as well. So to do that, we'll come back here to U2, right click and select group edit. What you can do is select U3. Notice the current component here is U2, but we'll select U3 in the list, go to all pins and select Z2 XY position and click process. So what happens, it will copy the Z2 position for U2 to U3, and that's complete. So we'll close that. So now when I come back here to U3 and click pin one, 
Notice it moves over there to the ground position that we used with U2, but this is now for U3. So now I no longer have to teach the Z2 position for U3. We can go straight to doing the Z1 position. So that saves us a lot of time. So again, we'll click in the board overview image to move near pin 1 of U3. Let's adjust that up here to pin 1. Again, I've selected Z1 right here. That looks great, so we'll save that. Use the arrow keys to move to the end of the row. And that looks good, so we'll save that group of pins. Again, it automatically incremented to pin number 8 for me. Move the crosshairs to pin 8. That looks pretty good, so we'll save that. And then move up to the end of that row. That looks good, so we'll save that group of pins, that 7 pins group. All right, so that's done. We'll now move to the next one, Q1. And I'll click on the board overview image to get us over to Q1. Now, the Q1 has three pins, which essentially means we have three combinations of two probes that we want to put down on this device. So I'll start by doing the Z2 position for pin 1. I've decided I want to put Z2 on this pin for when we probe pin 1. Save that. We'll switch to Z1 and I'll put Z1 on this pin. So when we probe pin 1 of Q1, it'll put the Z1 on this position, Z2 on this other pin here. So we'll save that and now move to the next pin. I'm going to have Z2 be on this pin again. Notice I'm not going to the exact center, and that's because I just want to give myself a little bit of extra space between the two probes when they come down to test this device. So we'll save that. Now we'll teach the Z1 position, which will now be over here. So we'll save Z1 to that, pos that position. And then lastly, we'll do the pin 3 combination. In this case, now I want to put Z2 to the back pin. Now remember, Z2 is on the left-hand side, so we want to keep it to the left in, in relation to the Z1. So we'll save that and then put Z1 over here on this pin. So that's the last combination of pins that we have to do on this transistor. Okay, that one's done. So the next step is to do R1. So we'll go next component. R1 is selected in the tree. I'll just click in the board overview image to go near R1. And these are very simple. We're going to put the Z2 on the left-hand side. That'll be our common. So I'll save that. Select Z1. We'll put Z1 over here on the right-hand side. Save that, and that's complete. So now we've taught the location of all the components on our sequence list. The next thing we need to do is to teach the up and down position of when we actually probe the devices. So we'll go to the Teach Height tab. We have R1 selected. We'll select pin 1 for R1, and the probes are going to move over to that position. So now with the probe sitting over pin 1 of R1, we can use these buttons here to move the probes down to the positions we want. So we'll set the up position first. So I'll just use this button here to move the probe 6,500 microns at a time. And I want to get those probes positioned so they're just above the board. This is the, the position that the probes will lift to as, the, as it's probing. So I'll save that as the sequence Z up. That means that for all the components, this will be the up position as it's probing. The next thing to do is to lower the probe down until it makes contact. You should see a signature down the bottom left in the signature pane when we make contact. Okay, I'm getting close. I'm going to change my distance a little bit shorter distance now. Okay, so we have contact. And we'll generally push the probes down a little bit farther past contact to make sure we get good contact. These are spring probes that we're using in the probe tips. So we'll save that as the sequence Z down. That means this will be the down position as it's probing for all of the components in the sequence. Of course, the next step would now be to probe the board. So now you go over to the scan tab, type in a serial number, I'll call it 001. Okay, so we'll scan this entire sequence by making sure this checkbox here for sequence is selected. Clicking the start button, click scan sequence. 
and then the prober will go off and probe all the devices we just created. Notice the signatures here are being shown as it probes. So right now Z1 is probing the pins of the device and Z2 is sitting on the ground point that we specified earlier. The ranges that are used when probing the devices were set by default. We have three default ranges, all at 3 volts, one at 50 ohms, one at 1k ohm, and one at 10k ohms. U3 is almost complete. Goes for probe Q1. Notice how close the probes are together. It always gets a little scary when it does this. And then lastly, it'll go over and probe R1. And just two pins, so that we get probes to each side of the device. So when the probing is complete, it will give you a result. In this case, it should come up as a no ref, means that there was nothing in the database right now to compare to because the way the system works is that you scan the signatures from a known good board and store those into the database. So you can go to this troubleshoot button. Here are the signatures from our capture. All right. And you typically want to go through these and review them and make sure they all look okay. All right, so if you do like the signatures, you can go and click on Set Reference, and those now become the reference signatures. Now the idea would be to put another board in here, a bad one, and scan that, and it will come up with the differences between the two boards. I'm going to simulate a difference by doing that same thing. So we'll put its fault on the board and then run the scan again. So just for the benefit of saving some time, I'm only going to scan one component. I happen to put a fault here on U2. So we'll just scan U2 only. So we'll uncheck the sequence checkbox, click Start, and click OK. So now the probe is only going to go over and scan U2. You can see the signatures being captured. Here's a little bit of video of the prober coming down and testing the pins of U2. Again, notice that the Z2 position is sitting on the ground pin. Again, we're seeing the signatures being displayed as it probes over here in the, the signature pane. So when it's complete, it will give us a pass or fail result. So notice it came up failed this time, so again you would click on your troubleshoot button. Let me make this a little bit larger. And what I had done here is I had put a short from the ground to VCC. It's a simple way to create the short here. And it does affect other pins on the device. So if we double click on one of the failed signatures, you can see the green signature was from the reference, the good board so to speak, and then the red signature was from our bad test, the one I had put the fault on. So you can see how the difference, uh, differences are displayed. At this point, you would use this information to help you troubleshoot the circuit board. Obviously, we'd be go looking to see if we could find the short problem on the circuit board. So that's about all I have to show you for this live demonstration. Please feel free to view any of the other videos on the Huntron YouTube channel. And thank you for watching.